Thank you. Okay, so we are about to start our speech competition for 2022, and we have the great pleasure of having Mr. Mishu be our MC again this year. He always has fabulous stories in between while we're trying to wrap things up, so he always comes up with some good stories. Don't do the bike short story, though, okay? We're going to leave the bike short story out this year. Okay. All right. Tell us about your trail running. All right. So we're going to get started. Mr. Mishu, it's all you. Welcome to the annual school speech contest. The purpose of this contest is to provide an opportunity for formal public speaking for all eighth grade students. Eighth graders across MDI RSS prepared original three to five minute speeches in an open letter. The highest scoring students will present today. An open letter is a letter written to address a wide audience of people, a specific group, or a specific individual or company organization. Although it may be written for a specific purpose, it is intended for all to make, to, for all to be able to read and understand the concerns or compliments that need to be addressed or paid forward. Open letters usually actually began back in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians wrote them on papyrus paper. The original intent was to use them to educate their people. Over time, their intent changed. In Greece and Rome, it became a literary genre. The letters always stated who wrote it in the beginning and exactly who the letter was written for. They were not used as a protest or criticism. As time progressed, the intent of the letter changed. They were written throughout the medieval period into today. Inventions such as the printing press allowed for more people to read the letters. They began to use it to challenge authority. This trend has continued into the modern world, but now with the added intention to educate and persuade people. Many famous people have used this format to communicate with the world, such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi. Today, teachers around the country and around the world have embraced the open letter format as a powerful education tool to help students explore their beliefs and then compose personal letters about them to be shared with others. This afternoon, we will hear speeches from five young people. Each student selected a topic of interest to him or her you will hear a variety of topics. Each contestant will be judged on the organization of material, delivery and presentation, and the speech's overall effectiveness. When a student's number is called, they will come forward and may begin when ready. After a speech is given, the student will return to their seat. The judges will have five minutes to complete their rating sheets. I will then call the next speaker in order. When the last student has given his or her speech, the judges will leave the room and head to a secret space to take time to deliberate and determine the winners. The timer will also go along with the judges. During this time, I'll award certificates to the students for their hard work on this project. As soon as the judges are ready, we will reconvene here. Before we begin, in earnest, I'd like to introduce the judges for today's contest. They are Mrs. Gertler, our principal, Mrs. Bean Ingram, our middle school social studies teacher, and Mrs. Paulson, our Title I reading recovery teacher. Keeping time for today's event will be Mr. Newman. He has also made sure that we could share this live stream with family members of the contestants. Thank you for all taking your time off your busy schedules to help us today. Just a few reminders for the audience. Please sit quietly and give your attention to the speaker. There should be no side conversations during the presentations or when I am speaking. We will now begin speeches. Numbers have been drawn to determine the order of our presenters this afternoon. Our first speaker is Mason LaPointe.
to those who litter. Imagine you're driving in your car, listening to music with a refreshing drink at your side. You're in your own world, and you don't care about anything else that's happening. Suddenly, when you take a sip from your straw, you hear that jarring sound that tells you there's nothing left in the cup. After a moment of disappointment, would you A, set the cup down and wait to properly dispose of it in a trash or recycling bin? Or would you B, wait till there are no cars in sight, roll down the window, and chuck it out? Almost everyone out loud would say A, but in reality, option B is just taken way too many times. Littering is one of, if not the, biggest problems on Earth. It's killing animals, plants, and even humans. No one is innocent of this crime, including me, but with hard work, we can make sure it's committed less. First, let's put ourselves into the mindset of a litterer. Well, the most common reasons for littering are laziness and carelessness, the lack of access to disposal bins, lenient law enforcement, and the presence of litter already in an area. For the people who say, there's already so much trash in the world, so it's okay to keep littering. Why would you contribute to a problem even if you see it as impossible to fix? When you get injured, you treat the wound. You don't make it worse. So think of litter as a wound in society and in everyone's lives, even your life. And maybe you'll have the motivation to treat it. The effects of littering are pretty severe. And if we don't do anything about it, things could get out of hand. The first effect would, of many would be the pollution it causes. As litter, like plastic, degrades, it releases microparticles into the environment, which aren't natural and can act as a poison. A good example is cigarette butts. And when large pieces of plastic make it to the oceans, marine animals suffer. Over 100,000 marine animals are killed each year just from littering, not to mention the 1 million total animals killed each year. Another effect that littering is having on the world is it's helping spread diseases. Trash and garbage are perfect breeding grounds for bacteria. And when you improperly discard your trash, you're helping spread diseases through direct and indirect contact. Nobody likes having their lives impaired due to diseases, due to diseases especially nowadays. Getting rid of trash is a vital step towards making sure that doesn't happen. The final reason why littering should be taken seriously is the, th is the simple fact that it's an extreme eyesore. Nobody likes to see trash on the side of the road, especially in a place they hold dear to them, like their own town, city, or even house. So we have clearly established that littering is quite a big problem. And this problem is going to need some solutions. One of the reasons people litter is the lack of disposal bins. Either the ones available are full, or there are no available bins at all. In order to solve this problem, we can simply increase the number of disposal bins everywhere, causing less trash overflow. One of the most important to solutions to pollution and littering would be recycling. Take it from the earth, because the earth is constantly doing the same thing. Once an organism dies, their body and nutrients return into soil, and they help the new batch of animals survive. If we want to decrease the number of materials we use, we need to recycle, recycle, and just recycle some more. Because when we reuse materials, new ones don't have to be manufactured. Now, I'm going to please ask the audience to close your eyes and imagine yourself in a litter-free world. Notice how beautiful it is, how natural it is how effortlessly it functions. Wild animals live in harmony with nature and without interference. Now open them. What if I told you that this world, this dream, can become a reality with hard work and dedication to the cause? Using recycling, more disposal bins, and local cleanups, we can counteract the effects like littering, pollution, um, the killing of wild animals, and the spread of disease. The biggest problems need the most effective solutions. And finding effective solutions is exactly what we're doing to get rid of litter. To those who litter, please stop. Thank you. Our next speaker today will be Alex discussing climate change.
Dear residents of Mount Desert Island, James Cameron once said, it's important for me to have hope because that's my job as a parent, to have hope. For my kids, then we're not gonna leave them in a world that's in shambles, that's a chaotic place, that's a dangerous place. Climate change has always been something I've been told about, similar to many kids around the world. Because of this, I can understand why some of you might zone out when it comes to kids talking about the climate. Maybe this isn't you, but don't tell us that you don't know what I'm talking about. To you, I'm probably just another kid talking about something that, in reality, I don't have much experience with. I haven't witnessed what things looked like 50 years ago. However, I have learned a lot about climate change through educators and a variety of sources. All right, let's take a step back. In the summers, I sail, similar to how you may swim, hike, or find other ways to relax. I think we can all admit that we enjoy the summer as it is and don't want all that much to change. Now, think about what this area looks like currently. Everything you love, possibly the sweet spring air or crisp autumn days where all you can smell are leaves and a hint of salt. Maybe the smell when you cross the Trenton Bridge in the summer or the colorful leaves in the fall. Everything that you may see every day but never really think about. Now, think about what you worry will happen to all of this, and whether that is an image that you want to see. I'll tell you what I see. What I see isn't awesome. Sure, it's still nice, but it's not the place that I see out the window right now. Maybe this isn't the correct image, but maybe it is. Maybe we shouldn't live our lives in fear, but maybe we should think about the generations that come after us. I don't want to live my life in fear, but I don't want those who come after me to suffer from what I did or didn't do. I want people in the future to be able to sail on MDI in clean water and have the same opportunities of enjoyment as I currently do. NASA predicts that climate change would threaten heat waves, heavy downpours, and ocean rise in the Northeast. NASA also predicts the Northeast will experience many challenges in agriculture and fisheries. In addition to this, ecosystems will become more compromised. This means that the species and wildlife that make MDI such a cool and exciting place may no longer have suitable habitats and ecosystems. This doesn't sound bad to me, it sounds horrible. Ever since I was in kindergarten, I've been going to the park on field trips. We've been to Eagle Lake and Jordan Pond more times than I can count. If I were a parent, what NASA is predicting would truly scare me. What makes MDI, MDI, is the wildlife and nature that surrounds us. With climate change, all of that could be gone. That doesn't sound like the wild and beautiful MDI that I know and love. While sailing isn't a sport largely affected by rising heat and water temperatures, other sports that I love will be affected. For example, the IPCC, or International Governmental Panel on Climate Change, predicts that temperatures could rise between 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit and 10 degrees Fahrenheit in the next century. Think about that. In 3022, the average February low in Bar Harbor could go from 12 degrees Fahrenheit to 22. To me, that is insane. A change that big would create huge impacts. There would be a much shorter time to ice skate on the lakes, and there would hardly be any time where the lakes would be frozen enough to drive vehicles on like so many people currently do. In the end, what can we do about climate change? It seems like an impossible question when, let's be honest, it's not really a question, it's a problem we can look in the face. We hear things about what we should do to help the earth, but it just simply isn't human nature to try to solve a problem in advance. By nature, humans are procrastinators, and climate change won't ever be solved if we don't acknowledge the true threat that it poses and everyone working together. We need to listen to the people who have been sounding the alarm for years and at least always be mindful of what we're doing or could be doing, as well as always remembering the true threats that we face. Thank you. Our next speaker this afternoon is Lila, and she will be discussing teen vaping. Dear teenagers, vaping may seem like a fun way to be part of a cool group 
or a way to escape from your everyday stressful lives. What you don't realize is you're putting yourself in harm's way every time you vape. This product might seem fun and inviting, but it causes damage to your mind and your body. These are risks that no one should be willing to take. Many teens think that there is no harm in vaping, and they're just inhaling pleasant gases, but this is far from the truth. When you vape, you inhale toxic metals into your body, like chromium, nickel, and lead. Although vaping may not be as bad as smoking, it causes lung disease, gum disease, and it causes you to lose focus. Multiple studies have been done by Dr. Tassaran, an adolescent psychiatrist, showing that students who vape are more likely to fail tests than students who don't vape. This is because when they don't have the vapes with them, they're all they can think about. This could be you, about to take an SAT, thinking you'll score high. But guess what? With an addiction to vaping, you'll struggle a lot more than you think. You might think that you'll just try it once, but then once leads into one more time, one more time, just one more time until you don't stop. How do you think this will go on to affect your work habits and success in the future? The decisions you make now will impact the rest of your life. So, teens often vape because they are attracted to the sleek design and easy use of vapes. They look at them like Apple products. They are also very cheap. You can buy vapes on Amazon for $7. But overall, the biggest reason kids vape is peer pressure. Peers make you feel like you are different in a bad way if you don't try it. When this happens, some teens think, why should I say no? What's the harm? I'm only doing it once, right? Wrong. Vaping is extremely addictive and can be very difficult to quit. If someone asks you to vape, it's perfectly okay to say no. And if you don't, you could end up like Sima Herman, a healthy 18-year-old girl without any underlying conditions had to be put on life support because of her addiction to vaping. She almost died because of the damage it did to her lungs. Sima said vaping made it seem like you were doing nothing wrong. It seemed harmless. Some teenagers, like Sima, don't realize the damage it does to them until they're almost near death. So before you try vaping, or you take out your vape, beware of the serious harm you're doing to yourself. Stop and think, if I truly care about myself, would I allow myself to do this? The answer should be no. For as long as I can remember, my own grandparents have vaped. One day they said they stopped, and they did for a short period of time. But eventually they came right back to the vape with no intentions of stopping. This is how addictive vaping can be if you start at an early age and you continue to do it. I understand that quitting vaping can be hard, but it's been done before by many people, which means you can quit. To quit vaping, start by making a plan. Ask yourself why you want to quit and remind yourself of the negative effects of vaping. In addition to this, understand what the withdrawal symptoms are. Some symptoms of withdrawal can be feeling tired, cranky, or angry. If you want to quit, Get support from your family and your friends. Over time, your head will become clearer, you'll be able to focus, and you'll get more respect and support from the people around you. You just have to put yourself first and make the decision to stop. So, does vaping sound pleasant? Does it seem like something worth doing to yourself or forcing upon someone else? In the end, I want every teenager to realize that vaping causes a great deal of health risks that impact your mind and your body. You should never vape. You should never start. But if you already have, remember that there are people willing to help you quit. Remember that you're not alone and that you can decide what future you want to have. Thank you. Our fourth speaker this afternoon is Emma, who will be discussing depression. Dear Depression, you often come in the worst times. You take the memories and moments of joy and twist them into something less. You bring along a sense of gloom and doom. You don't care who you affect. Anyone and everyone is a potential, vic potential victim, any age, any gender, any race. You take away our motivation to do daily tasks, like getting out of bed and combing our hair or brushing our teeth. You affect how we feel, think, and act. My friends and family worry about my health. They see what you're doing to me. We all do. 
You flood our heads with bad thoughts, tearing us apart to there's barely anything left of who we are. I stopped talking to my friends, telling myself that they don't care about me. I compared myself to the other girls around me, changing myself to better fit what I thought I was supposed to look like. Instead of hanging out with my friends, I'd be in my cluttered, messy room, feeling disgusted with myself. I wish I was skinnier, that I was more like the girls in magazines. I know it's not realistic, but with the media flood and the girls having similar bodies to that around me, it makes it impossible for me to not wish to be like them. A memory that I constantly think about is one from just last year, when my best friend moved away and I was alone again. It got to the point where I could barely sleep, and getting out of bed felt like it would kill me, because nothing felt like it was worth anything. I often find myself asking why I feel so out of place. Like every time someone looks at me, they're criticizing everything I do, taking note of all of my flaws. But even while writing this letter, I have thoughts question questioning myself. Am I doing good enough? Does anyone even actually care? <laughs> How dumb do I look? Depression has a huge impact on everyone, not just the people who have it. Depression can seriously do a lot of damage, and it is important for us to look out for each other. While we might not understand what each other are going through, it is important for us to still <coughs> make sure we know that we're not alone. Thank you. Our fifth and final speaker this afternoon is Edmund, and he'll just be speaking on the topic of depression. Edmund. Have you ever felt sad for seemingly no reason? Have you ever stressed about something way too much? Then fear not because you probably have a mental illness. Pat yourself on the back, you're going to need all the encouragement you can get. First off, what is a mental illness? A mental illness is a change in emotion, commonly triggered by events in one's life. These emotional changes are negative, but don't worry, it's a very common thing to experience. For example, millions upon millions of people experience some sort of mental illness. So don't, even I'm afflicted with a few things. These few things include mind-numbing depression, anxiety that hits like a truck, and a thankfully few times it does, and autism. So don't ever think you're alone, because you aren't, and people who are also affected by this accursed illness can help you out. Trust me, I've been there and still am. It's not fun having a mental illness, but if you can get help, you can live without being sad all the time. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Let's get into a little bit of myth-busting, with all the media stuff seeping into our brains and practically flooding it with false information, you may believe some things about mental illness that are completely untrue. Some people may say that it's lifelong and, you know, can't be cured, which is completely untrue. Well, it is true that there's no magical cure for it, there is a way to get rid of it. And it's only lifelong if you let it be lifelong. Be strong and ask for help and overcome it. People may also say, you're depressed because you're a weak person. No, no you are not. In fact, the fact that you're listening to this so closely means you want to get better or you want to understand it more so you can better understand and possibly help people who do have it. You still have hope, even if you might not think you do. On another note, mental illness is not picky. The person who you think has everything good in the world might have it. Your favorite celebrity or your awesome friend. Your fi Heck, even Einstein, one of the best mathematical minds to this day, had a heck of a depressive stage. And he became permanently engraved in history. Just because you're depressed or really anxious doesn't mean you can't be strong. You can get through this, no matter what. But you've heard that before. You may think to yourself, what about the other millions and millions that didn't do well, that didn't have the help they needed, and for that reason didn't become engraved in history if they may have wanted to? And the thing is, that's unavoidable. It's sad and pretty depressing, but it's how the world it's how the world works. But if you're scared about not being able to reach the big leagues and revolutionize the world, then don't be. 
because with sheer concentration and determination is how we got all of this, all of this, because of a few people who were able to put that aside and just focus on the main thing. You can do this. You may not think of yourself as smart, your test scores might not be that high, but, and your personal expectations may be lower, but remember this. Happiness is the best part of life. That's because without those tough moments, without the mountains of depression weighing you down, happiness would have no meaning. So when you're having a rough time, find something that cheers you up. It might be hanging out with your pet or playing some video games. It could even be as simple as finding a cool leaf on the ground. Whatever the method, find something that makes you happy and just stick with that. Trust me, it really does work wonders. So. So at this time, the judges are and the timekeeper are headed to the super secret location for deliberations on today's speeches. Pass the bar. Uh, congratulations on speeches well done, you guys. Very impressive. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, so, I shall continue. Yep. Okay. That was the personal commentary right there. Uh, the AOS 91 speech competition will be held on March 29th. At 4 p.m. at camp. It's actually 4:30. Sorry, they changed it. At 4:30 p.m. <laughs> at Camp Beachcliff, it'll be held live and in person this year. The first and second place winners from today will compete in that competition. Hmm. Our third place winner will be an alternate in case the first or second place contestants cannot compete. You will receive all the details prior to the competition date. At this time, I'd like to hand out certificates to all the participants with the assistance of Mrs. Clark. When your name is called, please come to the front of the room to get your certificate. First is Jaden for the topic of toxic internet. Ben for minor league salaries. Cora for ten year old self. <laughs> Boss for speeding in town. Alana for teen pressure. Kelsey for dress code. Eli for COVID vaccinations. And finally, Maddie, cost of extracurricular sports. Once the judges have made their decision, they will return to the music room. At that time, we will be announcing the winners. Oh, that's for later. Uh, not when we're live streaming. <laughs> Unless you have words of wisdom or feedback for your troops, this would be a good moment for your personal commentary to share with your journey in this process of speech writing. So I would invite you up here to speak to that if you wish. Would you like me to do that? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. I just thought maybe we'd get some trail speaker advice or something. Well, 
Well, maybe when you're finished. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to say to all of you who participated in this, not just the top five, but Mr. Newman and I, when we were um, looking at the overall scores and who to pick, it was not an easy choice. Um, just as to help you understand a little bit more about this, this was an assessment that was given to them. They had to do the writing completely on their own. So what you hear, what you heard of these five, as well as the other ones that you didn't get to hear, is something that they wrote completely and totally on their own. They did all the research. Um, they wrote the paper. They revised and edited the paper. It was all on their own. So I think um, everybody deserves a huge round of applause because what you came up with completely and totally on your own was fabulous. So I am very proud of you. Um, I'd also like to say that in this particular class, um, a lot of the students in here are, were extremely anxious about presenting. Um, as a matter of fact, there have been a number of occasions where people have said, I can't do it. Um, but every single one of you stood up, presented your speech, and did a fabulous job. Some of you were about to throw up, I'm sure, um, or about to cry, I'm sure, but you did it. And I cannot be more proud of each and every one of you. You guys did an incredible job. And you, if they could only hear the other speeches that you didn't hear today, it was the same thing. So you guys did a fabulous job. You overcame some serious like anxiety and some deep fears about presenting in front of people. Okay, And look at you guys today presenting in front of an audience, a live audience. You're on TV. That's so exciting. Um, so any questions or comments about this unit? Do you have any comments to make about the whole process and what you learned or what was hard for you or what you feel good about in terms of what you ended up doing? And that's also people who didn't present today. Come on. Oh, this is just like class when you try to start a discussion with these guys. Once one speaks, they all start rolling. Who's going to be the first speaker today? Go ahead, Lila. Uh-huh. Only because we've had more practice. Okay. And it just made me feel better not to learn. Yeah. Um, I agree with that, um, but I still messed up a couple of times. Yeah, but overall, how do you feel about yourself and your presentation? For real. I mean, it was okay. It was okay. There's, there's room for improvement. Okay, but you know what? That's true of life. There's always room for improvement in everything you do. Right? What else? Um, I think that the personal feedback from you and Mr. Newman after the first presentation was really helpful. Nice. Good. Good. How about my audience members? What are some of the things that you're like, yeah, I did much better than I thought, or I'm proud of myself because they can't see you, by the way, so they don't know who's speaking unless I say your name. Come on. <laughs> Boss. I know. And then and then you take the correction, which obviously they obviously both were weekly, which is kind of the beauty of this. And um, I just everyone would take topics that they kind of had were passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um and I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah, and I the topics were great, absolutely wonderful. But we also learned something else. Some of us learned something else. I hope you guys don't mind. But Emma and and um, Edmund, what else did you learn after this? We had a conversation after your first round. What did you learn about your peers after you gave your speech? They actually relate to a lot of what mm -hmm. you were saying. They related to a lot of what you were saying. Yep. So you have more people who understand than you, stand you than you think, right? And who are with you. Yeah. So it was a lot of learning, too. Um, hey, Maddie, can I single you out? I mean, Maddie also had a, something very close to home, right? When you t wrote about your cost of extracurricular sports, what? How did that? How did that feel for you to be able to write that down and get it all out and share it? Good. Good. What do you mean by good? Like it felt good to like tell people about it who weren't related to me. Yeah. Good. I was proud of you for that. I know that was hard. And Alana, yours with your teen pressures. I told you this before, but what did I say about teen pressures and when you were giving your speech and you're like, I think it's too much. Like you, you said that you liked how much it was, but the teen just wanted 
It did. I mean, Alana had this list of things, of expectations that we put on our teens, not only as teachers, but as parents and as friends. And until you hear all of that, it never really clicks in your mind just how much pressure kids are actually feeling today. So it was, um, it was eye-opening for me. It made me kind of think a little bit. Um, so it was nice. So I learned from you. Um, and then, are you going to be mad if I say something? Me? Yeah. <laughs> so um, Kelsey did hers on the dress code, uh, and the dress code is kind of a hot topic in middle school. So Kelsey, why, why did you pick that topic? Why did you feel like that was a need for you? You could, you could relate to it? Yeah. Did you feel better having put it out there? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Do you have any intentions of doing anything with that letter? Like maybe sharing it with administration? I think I'd do it, but I'm not in the Is it something you could possibly do? I guess so. I think so. I think so. Right? So you're, you, have, you now have a purpose behind what you did. It's going to go further than just getting a grade for giving your speech. Right? Maybe you could be the change. Right? All right, who am I missing? Oh, boss. Oh, don't worry, Ben. You're next. Oh. <laughs> you're coming, buddy. So, boss, you did yours on speeding in town. Tell me why you chose that topic. Right. So what do you think your next steps could be with that? Well, I'm actually not too sure. Um, but we should have been back here. Um, Kelsey <laughs> was, well, there was a suggestion that Kelsey was being um, sent out to administration or, you know, put yeah. the plan into action. Maybe that's what I can do with my speeding cards is just let people know or make, like, ratings or um, posters about be a yeah, and there, you know, there are people in this town that you could take your letter to. Yeah, right. So we have people, we have t people in in the town on committees that you could share that with, because maybe they don't realize it's a concern. How many of you experienced a situation where you've been in town and there's been a car coming through town fast and it's been a close call? Yeah, right. So, boss, maybe you can go further with yours. True. And then Ben, you did major uh, minor league salaries. Why did you pick that? How did you come? How did you? First of all, my assumption has always been that minor league players are paid not as much as major league players, but it was comparable considering they were a minor league. Until I heard your speech, and I realized their salaries are really low. So, why did you pick this? How did you learn this information? I've been to, my, I was like, I think three minor league stadiums in my life, and I like looked at them, and it seemed so nice from the outside until I read that article, and I just kind of wanted to learn more about it. Interesting. And I think like the day before I read my speech, I realized that I didn't really want to do that because part of my speech, I guess towards the end of it, I was trying to get at a bigger idea mm -hmm. of like how like people's home life affects. I'm not sure, but like how people's home life can affect like their school life and mm -hmm. sports and stuff. So I guess that was going to be the bigger idea, but I just didn't really have time to do that. Well, it's interesting because now you have another thing to think about, right? And how cool would it be if you could send that to a sports magazine or, you know what I mean? Like put it out there to somebody. Maybe they'll pick up on it. You never know, right? But it, I, like I said, I wasn't aware of the situation and the drastic differences until you brought it up. Well, maybe I'm not the only one that isn't aware. Like, in, for instance, how many of you realize the, the level of pay or the lack of pay for minor league players in baseball? No clue, right? So you might be able to do something more with that. Can't hurt. 
can actually talk about that. Maybe that's what we'll do next. We'll talk about where can we send our letters, what can we do with our letters. Yeah. Why are you all shaking idea. your head? Isn't that a that's, good idea? That's really good. No. Yeah. So the that's other... A, that's an, uh, a really uh, great next step. It's yeah. not anything that you've probably ever done or considered before. And you may not, it may be a long time in your life to consider it unless you take action now. It's like getting and doing your first speech. Right and what it was like to get to that point and actually doing it. But now, after you did it, you, you're all kind of like, okay, I feel better after I did that now. And for the people who do one today, oh, it wasn't as hard as the first one because now I have experience doing it. So you've built up that confidence and, and that self-efficacy and agency for being able to go and do that next step. And this would be a really great moment for you to keep to push forward rather than to run around and hide behind the tree Be neat. And then, you know, the paper does also take um, open letters. That's what the editorial section is, right? Maybe we can investigate that. Maybe I can reach out to the Islander and be like, hey, what are the chances I can throw some letters your way and you can publish them? I mean, it can't hurt to ask. We'll never know. I'm willing to, I'm willing to make that journey and try to make that happen. Um, you know, and I don't know. Maybe some people would be interested in presenting... We can talk to the school board and see if you can share your letter with the school board if it's something that relates to the school. Or we can send your letter to the town office if it's related to the town and something that you want done and put it out there. Can't hurt to try, right? Be interesting to see what happens. It might lead to something big. Remember Drew with his solar panels? What happened with that? It happened. It happened. He started it. Didn't finish it because he went. He left. He graduated, but he started it, and look where it is now. We're the biggest. We're the the high. We are the high school that has the largest solar panel array in the state of Maine, I believe. So things can happen just by somebody starting or getting a conversation going. So, so I don't think. I know that there are students at Eldridge High School who uh, wrote a letter and were advocating for a rainbow crosswalk to be uh, put in near the high school, oh. and last night they went before the school, the school board, and uh, they got it passed. It was students who were reading their letter and advocating for it, and they voted to do it. And that's, that's part of this activism that you can be a part of as well with the kind of letters that you've just written today. So that's like an example that just happened yesterday. Yeah. And it's the things that you're doing today that you can make actions happen like that. Too. So Drew did it, obviously here, and it just happened yesterday and elsewhere. Yeah. So you have you have the power to do it as well. You do, you do. So Miss Emma, you look like you're about to say something when he was talking about that. Uh, so the DOC uh, school is also working on trying to get that done at our own at our oh. own school. Wow. And what is happening? The sidewalk thing. They're doing a rainbow. A rainbow sidewalk. For diversity, and so you guys are working to get that to happen. So, what are you? Where are you currently now in that process? Um, we are about to send it out to um, everyone to like get approval first. So, you guys wrote a letter. Yes. Who'd you have to write that to? Um, Superintendent Misty, um, originally Miss Lindsay, and some other people after that. Okay. So you're, you're in that process right now of doing sort of like your open letter to try to make something happen. Great. Excellent. Is it scary to like think about writing a letter to the principal? Is that like a scary step? Sure. For some, yes, some no. What about if you had to write to the superintendent? What are your that fears? Why is that scary? Scary. Why is that scary? <laughs> What's scary about that? Their power, you feel like their power is more than yours. It is. It is. It is. But, yes, Mrs. Todd. Can I just say that, and I sent you a text as soon as the speech was over, and I, I said they jumped into their next meeting, and I was like, oh, You're voicing something that you believe in. That is, you know, to be able to advocate for yourself like that in the world, 
it's just so powerful and it will take you so far. You know, so it's just it's just awesome to see you all writing with such passion, but also with such courage. Um, and I just wanted to know that I I I hear you when I hear people were probably extremely nervous about doing this. Um, but you found it in yourself or, you know, to believe in your courage and believe in um, that you can do these things because you can and you do them very well. Um, and I just, yeah, I feel that. I'm really, I'm really proud. Like I said, it, it's unfortunate they didn't hear all the, all the speeches because they were all very, um, I feel like they were all coming from a place of um, yeah. really true to their heart and what, so. I was proud of you guys. It was awesome. All right, you got any stories for us? Been in any adventures lately? Like Mr. Misha? No, we can't do it. No, no. Bikes? He, he was, do you ride bikes a lot still? Are you still like a, or is it more of trail running and walking now? I have not been riding my bike as much lately, no. Uh, because I've taken more to the hiking, inspired by some of those uh, folks who had set a goal for like hiking every peak in Acadia. Oh. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sattler did that. They did? Oh, yes. No. In Katak. What? Yes. That's awesome. And, you know, they're like 50 years older than I am. So I figured if they could do it, <laughs> I should be able to do it as well. Give or take a few years? We're close. Close. Yeah, we're close, far apart. That right. Means, yes. uh, so. I was like, that's a neat idea. So uh, I've started doing a lot more of the hiking. And I found with the biking, the biking is a little dangerous because I've done so much of it that I go really fast and it be starts to become unsafe with so many other people on the road who don't know what they're doing. Uh, so I've, start, I've, I've really backed off on that. Um, I also like to, if I do bike or, or hike or run, trail run, I like to wear bright colors. For can you case. flash us your sneakers, please? Somebody can see your, your sneakers. Yes, these can are you my. Stanley, you got those? <laughs> you got yeah, those sneakers? My new, uh, trail running, they're the Peregrines from Satoni, and I'm very excited about them. Today's day one, but if I ever, like, you know, end up in the ditch or something, that people will be able to find me afterwards. Well, excellent plan. Oh, high visibility. Excellent plan. Like the Wicked Witch of the very important. Uh, I also wear. Uh, an ID bracelet that has like contact information. It's called Road ID. You can order them online and you can get different colors of, and different styles and all that kind of stuff. But it has emergency contacts on there for when I get found in the, in the ditch somewhere. It's always so helpful. That's, all, that's very, a little safety piece. And always let somebody know, if you're going by yourself, always let somebody know where you're going and mm -hmm. when you expect to return. Um, so what's your hardest trail yet? My hardest trail yet? Mm -hmm. Well, I. I have to admit, I have not done the precipice. I'm Anybody afraid of that just to precipice? walk that. I wouldn't trail run that. The okay. precipice? It's going to be a, it's the back side of Champlain. Yeah. Yeah. It's got ledges. Don't you have to like, don't you well, like I've ledges? I've done every, I've done every peak now. So it's great. So I love exploring that. I love the speed because when I'm biking, I'm also going so fast. I'm finding like I'm not able to just enjoy some of the nature that I'm in. Uh, in the hiking, I'm able to pause and look and it, it just weave into the fabric of the exercise I'm doing. So that's really great. So you do actually do running on the trails as well? I will. Depends. If I'm going on a longer one, I need to carry my camel bag for the water uh, and snacks along the way to keep me fueled. And I tend to not run if I have my backpack. That makes sense. Doing shorter ones, I will do the running. So one of my favorite ones to do is... Mansell Mountain, going up, yeah. going up the, what's that called? I forget the trail. You go down Pumpin' Station, you go left, and you go up that trail that goes up there. Uh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Why am I forgetting the name? Oh, I've done it a hundred times. Thing. What? The one mile rock type of thing over that. Trail. Well, before you get to one mile rock, uh, there's a trail that goes oh. up. It's, it's one of the best trails it's got, ever. It's got, it's like got over steps. 900 steps. Yes. Oh, what is that it's called? It's a great step workout. And I push myself so hard that I'm not able to speak. I'm like heaving heavily with out of being out of breath. And I try and go faster and faster every time, trying to keep setting a faster record. So I go up to the top, 
go to the peak, you come out to the outlook, go to the peak, and then I like coming down the Razorback Trail. You have to cut through a, a beautiful gully, you come up the other side, and then come down Razorback, and you pop out where there's a cul-de-sac, uh, and then you cut across, and it's the Cold Stream Trail back, and it ends up being about three miles in length, mm -hmm. and my goal, my big goal last summer was to be able to do it in under an hour. Uh, like regular hiking would be like an hour and a half, and then I started speeding up and speeding up and trying to do it. And so I was able to beat under an hour for that, which was wow. like a great goal. But that's pushing myself the whole time, and it's, you know, I lost weight. Winter wasn't kind, so we're working on getting that back up. I was going to ask you, did any some winter hiking? I've done some winter hiking. Uh, I've started doing that now, uh, inspired by the snowy owls. So right around Christmas time, we're over our vacation. Uh, they tend to hang out on Sergeant Mountain. Oh. So I went with my nephew, who is a birder, and we went up to the top of Sergeant, and we saw on our trip uh, six snowy owls. Six snowy owls. Uh, wow. Five of them all at once. We could see five at one time. Uh, around us, and one had just flown behind us, and then we came up and caught the five. And so we compared that, uh, we looked on the bird, there's a website where people track their bird sightings, and uh, it's the most that anybody had seen up there. But we did it really early, we started before the sun rose, and so we got, we were the first people up on the mountain that day, and got to see all those snowy owls. I just, um, fascinated with them. And it's not because of, like, Hedwig uh, or, or, or that. It's just the snowy owl phenomenon. They just seem so beautiful. Uh, and they're large. Their wingspan is, like, six feet. And they're just so regal, beautiful animals. So I've gone up now the past three winters uh, doing the snowy owl thing. I know your mom's gone up, too. Have you done it? No. Well, I, we did it in winter, but I didn't see the snowy owl. Mm. I can't believe we saw six all at, you know, one day. And just as we were kind of done being up there, uh, we were starting to come down, and all the other people were coming up, and they had their photographers with camera lenses that are like this big around and that long and ready to shoot. Like, it. you missed them. Like, you know, taking photos for National Geographic, and, they're, and we're like, oh, yeah, we saw six. And they were like, what? No way. They were freaking out that we had seen six owls, and they are like, where were they? I'm like, well, now that all you people are showing up, they just scattered everywhere. So they used to be over there, but then some went over there, and I think some flew over to Penobscot Mountain. Uh, so I'm not sure what the other people saw, but I doubt they saw a collection of six. They were kind of they were getting a little bit spooked with all the people oh, at the top. So they advised like, don't go up and spook all the owls, and that's exactly what everybody does then uh, to go see the owls. If you do do something like that, uh, make sure you're bringing. Um, if, if there's been any snow on the ground, you have to have uh, like cleats on your boots. They, it, it's a strange phenomenon that right where the trails are when you go up to the top is exactly where the thick rivers of ice form. So either you're going up on ice and it's so steep in some spots you just have to go into the woods so you can hold on to the trees to make your way up or make your way back down. Um, and that can be a, a good challenge. I thought crossing the causeway in cold, high tide was dangerous. I guess I'm not really living on the edge uh, with that, am I? Yeah, two years ago, when the ice was about four feet thick, and you had to just slide from one tree to the next tree going, coming down. Oh, kind of like a slip and slide. Yeah, well, I was pretty bruised up afterwards. Oh, that's sore true. for a couple of days because it was like, kind of intense. Yeah. The other thing is you have to plan for is once you get up out of the tree line and, and the tops of the mountains around here, most of them are like, Bald, um, desert, deserted, right? Ile de Mont Desert, as Sam, Sam Champlain said, named us uh, Mount Desert Island. So yeah, once you get up there, it's like a whole different climate and mm -hmm. super windy. And yes. that particular day was 27 Cold. degrees, and we got to the top, and it was a constant about a 35 to 40 mile an hour wind. And I'm glad I brought my extra layers because I would have lasted more than five minutes. Mm -mm. So anybody else do winter hiking? No, no, no. I don't like killing myself winter. I have a couple times.
Do you mind to go check to see how we're coming along? Uh, well, this, uh, I told you this is not going to be an easy decision. I told you this is not. Are they coming? Oh no! Here they come. They're coming. They're coming. Sorry, I'm still so on. I know. I'm a little worried. Oh, there was one. We've just been talking about snowy owls. Oh, really? Yep. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I forgot to sign this, but I'm doing it now. Oh, I did. I signed that one. Okay. <laughs> I signed that one, too. <laughs> all right, the moment you've all been waiting for. So this will work is Mr. Meester is going to announce um, fourth and fifth place, but not designated as fourth and fifth. And then he's going to go three, two, one. Um, and when he calls your name, please come up to get so, the Oh, okay. I'm going backwards. Got it. All you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, judges, for participating today and uh, putting in such thoughtful del deliberate, deliberation time. And we were only imagining that it was very difficult work for you. It was. So in no particular order, other than whichever one's on top, we have, and, and so this would be uh, a, a, not one of the... Not one of the top three. One, not one of the top three. Oh. Are we one letter in? <laughs> Are we letting in? Who's there? Oh! We're, we're just starting. So... First on our list is Emma Goslin. And next on our list is Alex Donahue. Uh, third place award goes to Edmund Kelly. Our second place goes to the topic of littering, Mason LaPointe. Thank you. And the first place for teen vaping to Lila Wagstaff. Oh, congratulations to all the winners and to all of our participants. I would like to thank you for attending this year's uh, speech uh, contest at Pemetic School. The students worked very hard in their speeches. It was wonderful to see the support and encouragement they received from their peers, their parents, and their teachers. Thank you, everybody. Don't go to our eighth grade. Anybody who's not in 